Good afternoon, safari owners and future safari owners across the world. My name is James Spagnola, and I will be assisting to you today in a pre-flight of the safari helicopter. Now, all pre-flights um, are done by the PIC, Pilot in Command, and they will vary from person to person. Um, no pre-flight is ever the same. What we try to do as pilots to make them the same is obviously use a checklist, as we have one right here. Now, I will not be using the checklist today because I cannot talk, point to things, and carry a camera at the same time. So, what I like to do first, um, with any safari helicopter, or any helicopter in general, is start top down. I believe the rotor head is probably the mo single most important uh, system on the helicopter, so I will generally take a look at that first and it starts while you're on the ground with the blades now what I'm looking for in the blades is obviously we got blade tape um, with these blades you generally do not want to fly without blade tape if you run into conditions such as dust or water and you're rotating at 400 plus rpm um, it tends to wear out the surface area. A lot of times too you will have blades that don't have blade tape on the far corner of the blade such as right here and you will get premature wear there so always make sure that also that's checked. Uh, we're also checking the general condition you know clean blades obviously perform better than uh, non-clean blades. We want to make sure there's no cracks. Um, if you do have blade tape cuts and stuff like that or tears in it you want to go ahead and remove that so it doesn't uh, peel itself as it's flying um, always make sure your windshield's clean ours is not the best right now but uh, we're gonna have to deal with it uh, back to the rotor head we're gonna go ahead and look at the pitch links uh, make sure they are loose um, and secure make sure they have their cotter pins Make sure the swash plate is not uh, overly loose. Um, we're all also going to check our control rod ends to the bottom of the swash plate. Make sure those are all loose. All have their cotter pins secured. And our lead lag hinges, which are these hinges right here. They are preset after we track and bounce them. They should stay in a position. Um, you always want to make sure that they are secure and they are safety wired. In this case, we do have a secured lead lag hinge. Um, after we get down, I will go ahead and check the fuel caps. Make sure uh, we have 100 low lead in here. And we do. Smells great. Make sure the caps are secure. And I will do the same thing with the other side once I get over there. I generally will take one side at a time. Keeps everything in view and you don't kind of jump around from place to place. This is our main rotor gearbox here and it does have a sight glass. You want to make sure that the oil level inside the sight glass is at least half. If you find that you are not halfway, you always can fill it up with this tube right here. That's the way it comes out and that's the way it goes in. Pretty simple. After the main rotor, um, you can also check the bolts and cotter pins, make sure everything is uh, secure. We'll go ahead and check the clutch. We always want to make sure that the clutch is loose before we take off. It'll, pre pre it'll prevent stress on the engine um, if it is um, if there's more friction than usual for it. If there is, uh, two things you can do: you can put some 100 low lead in just in between this crack right here, and go ahead and break it free. You could also stick a little bit of your uh, engine oil in there and kind of just uh, move it back and forth to also break it free. Now we'll move down to the engine. We have our alternator belt here. It is the only belt on the helicopter, which is nice. Uh, make sure that it's not overly tight. Make sure you can't twist it more than 180 degrees. We are also checking our shrouds, spark plugs. I'll run my hands over all these areas where there's screws just to make sure they're not loose and they're not going to come undone. I will check the engine oil. 
and anything between six to eight quarts is acceptable. We got seven in here right now, which is good. Okay, we're gonna check our cooling, our uh, engine cooling uh, radiator. Make sure that uh, the bolts are secure. Make sure there's no cracks along the edges or at the hinges where it's attached. Uh, we don't want that coming off. Next, I will move down the tail boom and I'll start with this bearing right here. I'll touch every single bearing and make sure they are secure. While I'm at, I'll go ahead and touch my, my antenna, my strobe, make sure everything is secure. You can also check the condition of the electrical wiring as well as the pedal cables uh, to make sure that this heat is not doing any damage to it and also you want to check for kinks you know if you do have stiffness in the pedals it could be that you ran your your line in a way that's uh, that's causing it to jam up a little bit uh, good thing to go over too is once you get to this position or one of the ballast locations um, you know what kind of flight am I doing am I gonna have two passengers on if I am then I should put my 14 pound ballast back here if I'm not it should be up with me in the uh, cockpit which it is. This is your vertical stabilizer. Uh, I will go ahead and rub my hands around it, make sure that these rivets are nice and secure. If you have screws, make sure those are nice and secure. You don't want that coming off in flight, maybe going into your tail rotor. Uh, here we're at the tail rotor gearbox. I'll go ahead and check for safety wiring. I'll look on the bottom of it, make sure there's no excessive leaking. You may find a drop here and there, nothing bad. Um, but obviously you can check that by looking in your sight glass right here and then you can see that it is in the middle of the sight glass which is good good for flight with all my rod ends I'll go ahead and check for excess of play um, in two different types of movements I have the vertical movement up and down as well as the lateral movement left and right make sure these are you no know, within tolerances this is a brand new gearbox so everything should be uh, should be good but you never know that's why you check and I'll go ahead and check the actuation of the tail rotor make sure it's nice and smooth check the condition of the blades make sure there's no cracks um, obviously check the important nuts or all nuts really are important safety wiring and then I'll work my way back um, going to the opposite side of the engine again checking the exhaust for cracks um, making sure all the uh, ducts are nice and secure, nothing's too loose, spark plugs are on. Uh, check the condition of the landing gear, you do have bolts that are going through it. This particular helicopter does have gear extensions on it. We get about four inches extra than usual. Um, I'm really sorry about this, but I can't take any requests oh, right my now. phone going off. Uh, you want to check make sure your wheels are off if you're not flying without wheels. At this point I would check the gas, but I already did that. Uh, you have two drain sumps, both have tanks and one on the outside where your gasculator is. I'll check the cap. Oh, see, it was loose cap, so I just prevented some, some accidental spillage possibly. And in the cockpit you just want to make sure that you got your headphones, you know, make sure you got a kneeboard if you need one. Before I start the engine, I'll make sure all the uh, cyclic controls are free uh, and collective, and the pedals. Make sure that uh, nothing's jamming them up. Go ahead and check your fuel selector valve, make sure it's on. And that's it basically for the pre-flight with the Spartan helicopter. It's a lot of uh, exposed components, so it makes checking everything pretty simple uh, and pretty quick, which is good. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the pre-flight, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.